We've seen a lot of good come from the movement control order in Malaysia. In spite of all the restrictions, we've seen God bring humanity closer, families spending more time together, and kind hearts giving to the less fortunate. We have many things to thank God for, especially for all the frontliners, from doctors to nurses to admin staff and the cleaners. As the number of infections and deaths gradually drop, restrictions begin to loosen, we place our hope and trust in His mercy as we present this song, Betapa Hatiku, from the Catholics at Home Virtual Choir. Betapa Hatiku Beterima kasih Tuhan Kau mengasihiku Kau memilikiku Thank you. 
Peace be with you, and welcome back to the second Saturday of our Triduum. Let's begin by praising God with this beautiful hymn, Praise to the Lord, the Almighty Father. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. O oh, my soul, praise Him, for He is thy health and salvation. Sustain it. Hast thou not seen how all thy longings have been granted in what he ordained? Praise to the Lord who doth prosper. and mercy here daily attend thee. Ponder anew what the Almighty can do. If with His love He befriend Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we are grateful to God for the many blessings we have received from Him through the prayers of our Mother of Perpetual Help. Let us once more ask her to pray with us and for us. Petition set three. The response is, Assist us, O loving Mother, that I may have confidence and trust in my daily prayers. Assist us, O loving Mother, that I may have courage and strength in my difficulties. Assist us, O loving Mother, when I feel hurt and revengeful. Assist us, O loving Mother, to return quickly to Christ when I have sinned. Assist us, O loving Mother, when a member of the family is ill. Assist us, O loving Mother, when I have problems with money. Assist us, O loving Mother, when we have misunderstandings with one another. Assist us, O loving Mother. Guide our young people in living Christ's way of life. Assist us, O loving Mother. Guide our leaders to govern justly and fairly 
for the common good. Assist us, O loving mother. Guide employers to treat their employees well. Assist us, O loving mother. That we may cherish and protect the life of the unborn. Assist us, O loving mother. Guide us in our loving concern and understanding for the poor and the deprived. Assist us, O loving mother. When we become complacent with no need for God or religion. Assist us, O loving mother. May Pope Francis receive courage and strength from the Holy Spirit. Assist us, O loving mother. May those who have died share Christ's glory forever. Assist us, O loving mother. Let us now pray for our own intentions. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear our petitions and grant them through the prayers of Mary, our mother. Amen. Let me now share with you the letters that have come in through our website. Dearest Mother Mary, I'm having fever daily since a few months ago due to my cancer. The fever kept coming back each time the medicine wears off. Mother Mary, please intercede for me that my fever be broken so I can live normally again. I also pray for healing from my cancer as current prognosis is not good from your devoted daughter. Dearest loving mother, please help my son in his job application. Please grant speedy recovery to a close friend's grandma who is infected with COVID-19 virus. I ask these in Jesus' name. Thank you in advance. Dearest Mother Mary, I seek your intercession for my children. They are in primary school. Guide them and keep them faithful. It is difficult to bring them up in the age of social media. I also pray for all the other children in our parish. Mother, please pray for my brother and sister-in-law that they will have a speedy recovery from their surgeries and illness and also heal them spiritually. Dear Mother Mary, I'm praying for a safe pregnancy and a normal delivery for my daughter-in-law and for a healthy baby from your faithful daughter. Dear Mother of Perpetual Help, Today I humbly ask for your intercession and prayers to help me get a transfer to my home district and get a suitable position. Thank you, Mother, from your grateful son. Dear Mother Mary, I have a friend who is suffering from severe headaches with no cure in sight. She is in her 70s and suffers sleepless nights due to the intense pain. Doctors are not able to help her. She comes to the Novena to seek your help, although she is not a Catholic. O most gracious Virgin Mary, please intercede for her, I implore you, from your loving child. A letter of thanksgiving. Dearest Mother of Perpetual Help, 50 years ago, while returning from Penang, our car, driven by my brother, had serious problems. For several kilometers, he had problems steering the car on the busy road near Taiping. When my brother lost control of the steering, the car was going to plunge. I closed my eyes tightly in fear and prayed, Mary, please help me. 
The car lost control and it overturned. We were rescued later by a passerby. On this 50th year after the accident, I can only say thank you for answering my prayers because it could have been a tragic accident. I thank you for the many people that come that came to help us get out of the car with only minor injuries for my mother, my brother and myself. You heard my cry for help and protected us. Thank you, mother, from your loving child. Another Thanksgiving letter, dearest mother Mary. It has been 5 years since I was diagnosed with prostate cancer. I still remember stepping out of this church after attending your novena when I received a call from my doctor confirming that the biopsy test on my prostate showed it was cancer. I felt let down by God and you mother for I had earnestly prayed hard. Four doctors confirmed that the cancer had spread to the rest of my body. I kept coming to you and the Lord for help. With the loving support of my wife, I got through the initial stages. The first breakthrough was in the CT scan, which showed that the cancer was still confined to the prostate. Even my oncologist was surprised. I went through several rounds of radiotherapy, but suffered no side effects. I thank God for the friend that introduced me to the alternate cancer treatments. I thank God and you mother for helping me through all this. Your grateful son. Let us now continue our devotions. Mother of perpetual help. We come to you and place our trust in you. You are a mother of mercy. You are called by all the refuge and the hope of sinners. Be then our refuge and our hope. Help us for the love of Jesus Christ. Stretch out your hand to us poor sinners. We bless and thank God for giving us this confidence in you. In the past we have so often sinned, but with your help we can conquer. and you will help us if we pray to you in all our temptations may we always turn to you and say mary help me let me never lose my god amen let us join with mary her prayer of praise and thanksgiving to god my soul glorifies the lord my spirit rejoices in god my savior He looks on his servant in her nothingness henceforth all ages will call me blessed the almighty works marvels for me holy is his name his mercy is from age to age on those who fear him he puts forth his arm in strength and scatters the proud hearted he casts the mighty from their thrones and raises the lowly He fills the starving with good things, sends the rich away empty. He protects Israel, his servant, remembering his mercy, the mercy promised to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Mary, you are the mother of Christ. And you are the mother also. Heavenly Father, we thank you with all our heart. for giving us Mary to be our mother she is so loving so thoughtful so understanding so kind we thank you for her amen our hymn dedicated to mary today is as i kneel before you please join me Oh uh-huh. 
Welcome, dear friends, to this Triduum, to our Mother of Perpetual Help. Today we are going to reflect on the theme, Sent with Joy to Heal. In the Old Testament, there is a book of Tobit, which tells the story of a stranger called Raphael, who appears to Tobit and helps them in their distress. He journeys with them to freedom. This stranger walks into the life of Tobias and directs him to use an ointment made from a fish to heal his father Tobit of his blindness. He also helps Tobias to scare away the demon that has been tormenting his fiancée Sarah by killing every one of her husbands on the night of her wedding before the consummation of the wedding itself. Well, Tobias and Tobit want to thank this Raphael and he reveals himself to be sent from God, not a human, who journeyed in their life, helped them to be healed of their ailments and he invites them to thank God, for he was only sent with joy to heal. Dear friends, the world today is broken, broken by a pandemic. Though Malaysia is getting better statistically, even a common cold or a flu or someone coughing in the neighborhood brings us fear in our hearts and makes us to suspect if it is again the virus. 
somewhere in some small corner of the heart, there is a secret wish, a desire to have someone like Archangel Raphael to intervene in our lives, to journey by our side. The Hebrew word Raphael comes from two words, Rafa, El. Rafa means healing and El means God. It reminds us that healing comes from God, that God is our healer. We have a God who heals us with great compassion. Isaiah chapter 54 verse 7 would say, For a brief moment I forsook you, but with great compassion I will gather you. This is the hope deep within our hearts, that our God will gather us, will embrace us tight to his heart and keep us ever close to him. Jesus is for us the visible face of this healing God. The gospel portrays this face of Jesus. He went about towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. Matthew chapter 9 verse 35 brings this to us. Jesus always looked at people as sheep without a shepherd and longed to reach out to them. He never gave a deaf ear to those who cried out for healing. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. He touched and brought sight to Bartimaeus, the blind man. If only you were to be there, Lord, my daughter would not have died. He went and brought back to life the daughter of Jairus. Lord, I know that you are life. He brought back life to the dead man, Lazarus. Even dogs eat from, the, from crumbs that fall from your table. He healed the daughter of the Syrophoenician woman. Jesus brought healing in the lives of people. And as Jesus sent out his disciples, he gave them authority over tormenting spirits and to heal people of their sicknesses. To be a disciple of Jesus means to be a Raphael, the healing presence of God to the wounded world. Friends, by our sacramental union with the church and with Jesus, each one of us are sent out to give a listening ear to people who are broken. To be that healing presence of God in their lives. To visit the sick or the lonely or at least give them a phone call. To be that healing presence to the elderly and to the lonely. At least those who are known to us. Of course, by following all the safety parameters, ensuring that both they and we are safe. Mary, a mother of perpetual help, is a classic example of the one that was sent with joy to heal. At the Annunciation, on hearing that her cousin Elizabeth had conceived, she ran in haste to reach out and to help her an accompanying presence to one who needed healing. At the wedding in Cana, knowing that people are going through an emotional crisis, she went to her son and interceded to bring something out of a situation of hopelessness. She brought joy, emotional healing in their lives. At the Calvary, when Jesus was going through the most crucial phase of his life, Mary was there by her powerful presence to remind her son of her physical presence to a crying person. Mary continues to be a healing presence to the disciples after the, uh, the resurrection and ascension of Jesus. When they were afraid, when they were torn from within, 
these men who ran away from Jesus at a time of crisis. Mary is there to unite them, bring them back together, a healing presence of hearts torn with pain, with crisis, with fear of brokenness. Well, dear friends, Mary is for us someone who was sent with joy to heal. We, as her ardent devotees and true children of God, let us follow her example. Let our presence bring healing with joy. Let your family members in their sicknesses, in their loneliness, in their pain, find joy and accomplishment in your presence. May you find the Archangel Raphael accompany you always, especially in moments of your sickness, in moments of your pain. And may you be that presence of Archangel Raphael in the lives of others around you. Dear friends, as we prepare for the great feast of our Mother of Perpetual Help, may she be an inspiration in our lives who gives us the joy of health and healing and who invites us to be that healing presence in the lives of others in a broken world. May Mary, our mother, intercede for us now and always. Amen. for the sick. Together, Lord Jesus Christ, you bore our sufferings and carried our sorrows. Hear our prayers for the sick. Help them to unite themselves with your suffering. And if it is your will, may they get better. Let them never forget that you care for them. Amen. Please join with me this prayer for the pandemic. Mother of perpetual help, with the greatest confidence we come before your holy picture to beseech your intercession. We think of you, Mother, at the foot of the cross. Your heart must have bled to see your son in agony, but your joy was great when he rose from the dead, victorious over the powers of evil. Mother of sorrows, pray for us in this time of trial. Help us not to lose heart. Intercede for your people who are afflicted with coronavirus. Comfort your people who are vulnerable and anxious. Protect healthcare workers who put their lives at risk. Inspire our leaders to make good decisions. Change our hearts so that we may act responsibly. Teach us to trust in God's love and mercy and to share with you the joy of having courageously faced up to all the challenges of life. Amen. Let's now pray for the Pope's intentions. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, 
and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us, sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. sacred image with those eyes so sadly sweet Mother of the Petrol Sacra see us kneeling at thy feet in thy arms thy child thou bearest so so for thy joy Given them bread from heaven. Let us pray, O oh God, in this wonderful sacrament, you have left us a memorial of your passion. We ask you to enable us so to worship the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may constantly feel in our lives the effects of your redemption. You who live and reign forever and ever.
Blessed be God, blessed be his holy name, blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man, blessed be the name of Jesus, blessed be his most sacred heart, blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit of Paraclete. Blessed be the Great Mother of God, Mary most holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. Thank you for joining in. As you know, today is the ninth day of our Novena, but the second day of our Tridum. Next week, we begin the final Tridum Novena, followed by our Tridum Mass. Thank you for joining us. Please spread this Novena to your friends. We have had very good feedback. Join us next week for our feast day. Thank you and God bless you. Our final hymn is this beautiful hymn that we can all join in, Prayer of Saint Francis. Oh, Master 